And the loser of a million dollars and all his hopes and dreams, Taylor Williamson. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Oh. So, Taylor, now that you've lost the biggest show in America, what are you going to do now? I'm going to go tell some jokes in Denver. Ladies and gentlemen, Taylor Williamson. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Taylor Williamson the first, nice to meet you. I'm the second most talented person in America. <laughs> of 2013. Clap if you did not watch America's Got Talent. Totally cool, just so you know what's up. <laughs> Someone's very excited about not watching that show. <laughs> I don't watch that garbage. <laughs> well, for those of you who did not watch the show, um, I came in second place. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I lost to a Japanese man from Japan. Uh, which makes me the most talented American in America, so that's very exciting. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, what else did you want to know about me? Um, I hate Japanese people. They ruined my life. I think we should close the borders. I'm sick of these people coming to my country, taking my jobs on reality shows. They're bringing the earnings to foreign economies. <laughs> How close have you ever been to winning a million dollars? I was one Japanese man away <laughs> from a million dollars. But I figured out a way to get revenge for this tragedy, you guys. I just signed up to audition for Japan's Got Talent. <laughs> Hopefully I'll win a million yen. <laughs> then I can buy a bagel. <laughs> Just so you know, this is not part of my comedy routine. I really do hate Japanese people. <laughs> I used to like them, though. I really did. My grandpa did the most horrible, awful things about the Japanese. I'd always defend them. I'd be like, Grandpa, they're not liked anymore. Things are different now. But after all this, I was like, Grandpa, you're right about everything. <laughs> I wish Godzilla was real. <laughs> I'm a loser on a reality show. I'm like a Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> After the finale of America's Got Talent, I was on stage being really, really sad. And then one of the judges, supermodel Heidi Klum, one of the most beautiful women in the whole entire world, she came up to me and she kissed me on the mouth. <laughs> I would have rather had a million dollars. <laughs> She's German, I'm Jewish, that's gross. <laughs> It's great to be here. I'm having so much fun here in town. I was walking around uh, yesterday, found a pamphlet that lists the warning signs your child may have autism. Characteristics include if your child does not like to be touched, uses limited facial expressions, or does not respond when his or her name is called. You know what this means? Every girl in Denver is autistic. <laughs> We're having so much fun, you guys. <laughs> I'm not a parent. Um, you know, they say the hardest thing in the world is raising a child. I think the second hardest thing is putting a comforter inside a duvet. <laughs> <laughs> and
And if you didn't laugh at that joke, uh, it's probably because you don't know what a duvet is. <laughs> Those are the options. <laughs> I went to go visit my mom, and she was like, Taylor, I want to let you know if anything ever happens to me, I give you power of attorney so you can decide whether or not to take me off life support. Then she told me if she dies, I get $250,000. <laughs> so then I unplugged everything in the house. And she was like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm just practicing. <laughs> I'm not going to kill my mom, you guys, all right? <laughs> God forbid she dies, though. My life would be amazing. <laughs> About a quarter as good as Kenichi's life. Uh... I hate Japanese people. Uh, <laughs> I was visiting my mom's house recently, and uh, when I went to my mom's house, I found that uh, she has a lot of naked pictures of me and my brother. I thought that was kind of weird. Uh, what's a bit more weird is they're not baby photos. <laughs> Mostly college. That's weird. Every time I talk to my mom, she reminds me that I'm an adult over and over again, as if I was unaware of this already myself. Taylor, you're an adult. You're an adult, Taylor. And I'm like, I know that. If it wasn't an adult, I wouldn't be living in my own apartment that I'm asking you to pay for. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez Louise. My mom is the coach for my soccer team. The one good thing about this is that I got to pick my team name, you know? So I was a huge Arnold Schwarzenegger fan, so I decided to name us after my favorite Arnold movie. I decided to call us the Predators. Looking back, kind of a creepy name for a children's soccer team. <laughs> Hey, Billy, what are you going to go do this afternoon? I'm going to go play in the park with the Predators. Oh, have fun. Oh, cool. Be back by five, whatever. <laughs> my mom felt like she always had to be harder on me than all my teammates, but she always shows the wrong situations. One day, I was late for practice. She was like, Taylor, you're late for practice again? Go run two laps around the field. When you come back, I want to hear your excuse. It better be good. So I ran around and came back. I said, all right, coach, when I was late for practice? Because you stopped at Target. My parents were always very politically correct. One of the few games my brother and I were allowed to play growing up was Cowboys and Native Americans. <laughs> we weren't allowed to use guns and bows and arrows. Instead, we had to use apology letters and discount vouchers to casinos. <laughs> I'm sorry for taking your land. Here's a letter. Oh, don't worry about it. Things happen. Here's 20% off our buffet. My parents got divorced when I was little. Anyone else have divorced parents, anybody? <laughs> Woo. Shout out to broken homes. Everyone's getting divorced now, you know? They say they'll death do his part, right? I met a guy that got divorced after, after six months of marriage. What was his excuse? I really didn't think she lived that long. <laughs> she was so pale. My parents got divorced when I was little. They hated each other. My mom used to say to me, Taylor, you know your father's child support checks are barely enough to buy the dog food. And I'd be like, why are you using my child support to buy dog food? And why do I always have to eat dog food? And why is the dog at Happy Meals? This is not fair at all. When I was 16, I was driving my dad's car, and he was yelling at me, and I crashed his car into the garage. And he was like, Taylor, you have to pay for the repairs because you're responsible for the damage. Yeah, so now when I get the bills from my therapist, I send those to him. Uh, that worked out. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Comedians. Comedians were oftentimes asked, like, who's the funniest person in your family? And then comedians try to act modest by responding with things like, oh, my brother is the funniest guy I know. My father, that's where I get my sense of humor. When someone says to me, Taylor, who's the funniest person in your family? I'm always like, me? <laughs> I'm a comedian? <laughs> like, what a stupid question to ask. Like, you never hear, Oprah, who's the best talk show host in your family? <laughs> or Michael Douglas, who's the best actor in your family? Bad example. Um, um, 
That's a joke for the teenagers in the audience. <laughs> Kids, it's Catherine Zeta-Jones, that's the joke, anyways. <laughs> you ever hear this from your family? Spend time with your grandparents, find out where you came from, they're not gonna be around forever. You ever hear this nonsense? <laughs> well, I did this, then I found out things I did not want to know. <laughs> I found out my grandma's parents were first cousins. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! Hooray! Family time! I wonder what their wedding was like? Just everyone sitting on one side of the aisle? <laughs> so, where'd you guys meet? Grandma's house? Oh, oh. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. My grandma just got on the internet. I was very excited about that. I told her, Grandma, I have a website. Go to taylorwilliamson.com. She went on the keyboard, she in Taylor Williamson, D-O-T-C-O-M. I said, no, Grandma, you're so silly. You type in Taylor Williamson, period, and then com. So then she typed in Taylor Williamson, period, comma. You ever have the urge to smack Nana? <laughs> then you're like, I can't do that. That'll put a stop to my annual $5 birthday check. <laughs> I need that. I'm a stand-up comedian, I actually do need that. I really do need that. <laughs> My grandma's racist. Thank you. <laughs> she told me, Taylor, if you ever marry a black woman, I will not come to your wedding. I said, Grandma, by the time I get married, I don't think you're gonna be alive anymore. <laughs> My grandma doesn't like that joke. <laughs> she says it's too dark for her. I just want you guys to know that I'm not racist, okay? You don't believe that I'm not racist? How dare you? I don't know why I'm trying to prove myself to you. I don't know you. Why am I getting defensive? You don't know me, I don't know you, but I'm not. I'm not a racist. Why is that funny that I'm not a racist? You shouldn't be a racist. What a horrible thing to be. Like, if I ever have kids, I want to make sure they grow up being friends with every color of the rainbow. That means no black people. <laughs> or white people, I guess. Um, definitely no Japanese people, for sure. For sure. For sure. I just want you to know, I don't just hate Japanese people. I hate a lot of other people, too. Um, I hate uh, French people. Here's my problem with French people. No matter what I'm doing with a French person, they spend the entire time telling me how much better France is, you know? Like, I could be at a restaurant eating food, and he'll be like, well, you know, in France, oh, hell, he is so much better. Or I could be at a healthcare clinic where I hang out all the time, and then he'll be like, well, you know, in France, all cuisine is so much better. I figured this out, you guys, and I'm so excited to share this with you. This is how you get a French person to shut up, okay? This is how you get a French person to shut up. Here's what you do, you go, hey, French guy, hey, French guy, can you say squirrel? Then they go, skit, 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 yeah. I don't like British people. I'm such an angry person. I'm so sorry, you guys. I have so much anger in me. Here's my problem with British people. I don't understand what they're saying unless they're singing. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know what they're saying. I was walking around one day, my, my phone ran out of battery juice, so I'd ask a stranger what time it was, and the stranger turned out to be British because God hates me. <laughs> I said, excuse me, sir, do you know what time it is? And he said, I say, why the time is this rhyme? It's a nickel past the dime. 
was like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I was like, ah, oh, you're British. Would you sing me your answer, please, so I know what you're talking about? And he's like, <clears throat> the time is 10.05, Harry Potter. I was like, thank you, now I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Why didn't you say so in the first place? I've been traveling a whole lot, you guys. I've been traveling so much this year. Um, I was invited to go to a strip club in Michigan in January, and I said, no, thank you, because I like what a strip club in Michigan in January is in my heart, and I don't want to mess with that. <laughs> in my dreams, this is what a strip club in Michigan in January is like. There's a lady on stage wearing 300 layers of clothing. She gets sadder and sadder the more naked she gets. Then she finally takes her bra off, she falls over and dies. And then the gentlemen they come up and take their dollar bills back while Circle of Life plays in the loudspeakers. <laughs> I hope that's true. Please don't correct me if I'm wrong. I'm guessing that's how it works in Colorado too. I'm not sure for sure, but we'll just go with yes. Um, I went to uh, Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> Things are going great, thanks. <laughs> Whoever came up with the name Iowa, very lazy person. He probably said to his friend, hey, what do you think we should call this place? And he was like, oh. <laughs> and he was like, that's really good. We should use that. That's really good. I like that a lot. I like that. I went, uh, I went to San Francisco. Beautiful place. Beautiful place. So many dudes holding hands everywhere I went. But I think it's a really wonderful thing. Like, you're never too old to walk across the street safely. You know, it's really nice. <laughs> it's really great. It's, you know, it's beautiful. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> I uh, went to Indiana. You know, in Indiana, they stopped teaching cursive in public schools. I just think it's so sad these kids are growing up in a world where they can't read the neck tattoos on gangsters. <laughs> it's horrible. It's horrible. It's so sad. I love performing. This is my dream come true. I love performing for crowds full of wonderful people like yourself. But I hate traveling. I hate the process of getting there. I hate flying. I hate when the person next to me on the plane wants to talk to me the whole time. Leave me alone. Why can't I just do what I was taught to do as a child? Why can't I just be like, I don't know who you are, stop talking to me, stranger danger. <laughs> stranger danger. Stranger danger. Stranger danger. But apparently that's like a rude thing to do. <laughs> My friend told me, Taylor, if you want to be polite, the polite way to ignore someone to say, sorry, I'm from another country. I don't understand what you're saying, you know? So on the way here, this guy was like, excuse me, sir, what do you do for a living? I was like, sorry, from Canada. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maple syrup hockey, I don't know. I also hate, I hate flying, but I also hate waiting for the plane to come, waiting in the terminal. My computer ran out of battery juice. I'm always running out of battery juice, you guys. So I had to go charge up my computer's battery juice. And there's only two plug holes available within 10 miles, because whoever puts together the airport is a jerk. He loves just watching people like scramble, the Lord of the Flies, trying to figure out, ah, oh, woohoo, uh, uh, there's one guy, ah, uh, what are they, uh, but there's two plug holes available, and they're both being used by one monster. He had his phone plugged into one plug hole, and his computer plugged into the other plug hole. We all know he could have been a good American and plugged his phone into his computer, his computer into the wall, and left a plug hole available for the rest of his good tax-paying citizens. But no, he decided to live his life as a plug hole hog. <laughs> so I did what any reasonable, rational person would do. I decided to start praying that his plane would crash. <laughs> I said, dear Lord, uh, please make sure this selfish plug hole hog monster's plane crashes into tiny little pieces, total devastation and destruction. I know this is a lot to ask for, but this is war. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. I'm sorry we haven't talked in a long time. I haven't had an audition lately. <laughs> please work on that. Thank you very much. So, thank you. You're horrible people. I like you a lot. <laughs> We're getting along great. I like you guys. <laughs> so I felt pretty good making the world a better place, as we all agree, you know? About an hour later, they call my flight. I get in line. And then I realize that guy's in line right in front of me. <laughs> I just prayed for my plane to crash. <laughs> so I was like, hey, God, how's it going? <laughs> you look great, by the way. <laughs> Have you been working out? You look amazing. What are you doing? You got the thigh master or something? Is that what you've been doing? I just checked in to tell you that, you know, but while you're here, uh, just while we're here, since I'm here, while we're here, um, I was just thinking I'd like to pull an audible my prayer from earlier. 
thought that was very selfish and horrible of me to ask for everyone on my plane to die. Who am I to ask for such a thing? Please let me rephrase that to be clear. Uh, please, God, make sure I survive this plane crash. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, and uh, go bless yourself. <laughs> I used to live in New York City. Anyone here ever go to New York City, anybody? Yeah. Five people, that's cool. The rest of you guys like, I've been to Aurora. It's the same thing, it's the same thing. Um, New York City, beautiful place. Uh, here are a few things I learned through my experiences in New York City. First, I learned that pretty girls on subways don't enjoy talking to really talented up and coming comedians. Uh, I learned that. Um, I learned that when you're done using a condom, you're supposed to tie it in a knot and throw it on the sidewalk. <laughs> And my favorite thing I learned in New York City, just because you're homeless doesn't mean you can't have cats. <laughs> I was accosted by a homeless man. He said, give me your money or I'm gonna go jihad on your ass. And I know I should have been concerned, but instead I was impressed. This homeless guy has been keeping up with the news. Someone's been reading his blanket. Because <laughs> they sleep with, okay, never mind. Um, I think some of us are too quick to judge homeless people. I saw a homeless man walking in the street in his underwear. I didn't judge him, I'll tell you why. Because though he was outside, he was technically at home. And how would you feel if someone burst into your home and said, put some pants on, or I'm calling the police? So next time you see a homeless guy walking in the street in his underwear, instead of judging him, you know what you should do? You should walk up to him and say, hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> I love what you've done with the place. It's so nice. It's really nice. It's really nice. A little advice for you guys in the audience. Have you ever lost an argument with a friend via a text message? Never use the word touche, because it just looks like you wrote tushy. <laughs> no, Bill, you're wrong. World War II ended in 1945. What do you have to say about that? Tushy. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. That's what you're saying. I got an iPhone. First day I got my iPhone, I typed my name Taylor into the iPhone. Then it has a little spell check thing where it tells you what it thinks you meant to say. I type in my name Taylor, and spell check goes, did you mean Gaylord? <laughs> no, I didn't, iPhone. <laughs> Thanks for asking, though. I'm like, great, iPhone's made by the same guy who picked up me in fourth grade. This is fantastic. This is wonderful. <laughs> it's great news. <laughs> I'm not gay. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> Why did all the women start clapping? I don't understand why. Why are you clapping at that? Why would you clap at that part? <laughs> I do get hit on by gay guys a lot. I'll tell you this, I get hit on way more by gay guys than by straight guys. Um, I love pro wrestling. I hate when people say like, dude, wrestling is totally gay. It's just a bunch of dudes rubbing up against each other in their underwear. I'm like, yeah, that's why he's not gay, because they're wearing underwear. <laughs> it's almost gay. You know, like a son kissing his father or a swinging a tennis racket. Um. I was at a grocery store the other day, you guys, and I, was, I went to get some bananas, and I looked at the banana section, and all the bananas were green. All of them. A bunch of green bananas. I just stood there like, what? 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 And this stranger came up to me, he was like, hey man, what you do is you buy them today, you wait two days, then you eat them. I was like, what are you, banana expert? <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's when I realized we were flirting. But I've never flirted with a dude before. So I was like, let's see where this goes, you know? So I said, let me ask you a question, sir. What would you do if I gave you my banana? He was like, well, uh, I'd peel it very slowly, then lick it all over. And I was like, well, that's gross. Um, and then he was like, what would you do if I gave you my banana? And I was like, well, uh, I'd put it in the blender. <laughs> You guys are awkward. <laughs> I went to a department store today and I saw a pregnant mannequin. That really bothered me. Because you know it wasn't consensual. I don't get that joke either. I don't know. I am Jewish. You may be wondering how I'm Jewish, yet so handsome. How is that possible? Um, I'm actually half Jewish, but I round up. <laughs> I like learning about different religions. They said Jesus could turn water into wine. How cool is that? Now, I'm not that good, but I am pretty cool myself. I can turn water into hot chocolate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All it takes is hot water, chocolate, and a little bit of faith. But mostly hot water and chocolate. Um, I returned a box of cereal to the grocery store, and uh, my roommate was like, why are you so cheap? Is that because you're Jewish? I said, no, I'm not cheap because I'm Jewish. I'm cheap because I'm poor. Not everything I do is just because I'm Jewish. For example, I'm circumcised because I'm classy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went shopping with my roommate and he purchased a camera for his laptop so he can talk to his girlfriend who lives across the country. Isn't that cute? And I purchased a bowl so I could vomit into it. Because <laughs> I don't get vomit on his keyboard. We were watching this documentary on Stonehenge. People are flying from all across the globe to go visit a bunch of rocks just because they were built by aliens. Big deal. So was my driveway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get all political here, but I don't get why people care so much about illegal immigration. These are hardworking people taking jobs no one else wants to do. I just let them have the jobs, right? I just don't understand why is it such a big deal if I want to hire an undocumented worker to do my manscaping, right? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> It's so special and cool performing here at such an awesome theater. Normally I perform at comedy clubs, and hanging out late nights at comedy clubs, sometimes the waitresses ask me to walk into their cars. Now I'm more than happy to do so, but honestly, what kind of am I gonna do if something bad happens? <laughs> I could say, uh-oh. Uh-oh. I could do that. I could blow my rape whistle. <laughs> I could let her blow my rape whistle. I almost died there. Did you guys see that? I almost died. <laughs> I almost died on my comedy special. That would be amazing. It gets such good ratings. Can you imagine? Like, watch, he died. Watch the special Thursday night. <laughs> I'm skinny. Why'd you laugh there? I don't understand why that... I don't understand why you laughed there. I don't understand. Why are you clapping? I don't understand what you're doing now. 
I'm supposed to be the weird one, okay? Now you're being weird. I have 0% body muscle. People make fun of me for being thin. I don't appreciate it. This guy was like, hey, man, you're so thin. What do you weigh, like a buck 20? How dare he make fun of my weight using currency? That's not the only American that would do, you know? Like, no one in England's like, hey, man, you're so fat. What do you weigh, like 400 pounds? I'm a little bit insecure about the way I look. A friend of mine told me, Taylor, you don't look as young as you are. And I was like, yeah, right. So I went to a complete and total stranger. I said, excuse me, complete and total stranger, how old do I look? And then she said very confidently, 37? <laughs> Which would not be a problem at all if I was like 60. <laughs> I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm so flattered. Ooh, whoa, you made my day, you know? Or if I was 37, I'd be like, yeah, you're really good at this. <laughs> That was a great guess. Wow. I'm really impressed. Wow. But I'm 28. <laughs> this is terrible news. I said to her, why would you say that? And she's like, oh, don't worry. I always go over. It's my policy. That's a horrible policy. You do it very poorly and the price is right. <laughs> I told her friend of mine who's 40, he's like, oh, I know what it's like. I went to a restaurant recently and I got carded. <sighs> That's not what it's like. That's the opposite of what it's like. What it's like would be as if you're graduating from high school and instead of receiving your diploma, your principal hands you an ARP membership card. That's what it's like. Um, I try to eat healthy. I think that's important. I also think it's important to over enunciate the word important. It's very important. I'm a pescatarian. If you don't know what that means, I'll tell you. Uh, it means I don't eat meat. I only eat Pez. <laughs> so far today, I've been in nine comas. <laughs> I'm so sorry for everything. I really am. I really <laughs> genuinely mean that. Um, you guys are such an amazing audience for life. Thank you for being like that. Uh, you guys are so special and amazing. And uh, you're a great crowd. Thank you very much for being so wonderful. I really mean that. Thank you. Um, I've been told I sound like I'm sarcastic all the time. You guys really are great. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> you really are. Yeah. <laughs> I've also been told that I look like I have allergies. <laughs> and I look like I date Asian girls. Um, this isn't really a joke, it's a serious question. I need your help, you guys. How come it's okay when you see a dog, you can go, Oh, that dog's so cute. Oh, that dog's adorable. But then I'm creepy when I go, I think that dog is attractive. Come, no one answered my question. <laughs> my friend Margie just got a Labradoodle. And if you're not familiar with that, cutest dog I've ever seen in my whole entire life. Uh, it's a mix between a lab and a doodle. <laughs> I can't even mix up the dog's father's a four pound black poodle. Dog's mother, 60 pound white Labrador retriever. That's a huge size difference. But I guess it proves the stereotype that black poodles love fat white bitches, right? <laughs> uh, it's a dog joke. I had a mouse in my house. I don't know if you've ever had a mouse in your house, but I had a mouse in my house. And this is how I found out I had a mouse in my house. I was sleeping, and then I felt a mouse crawl across my face. And I was like, oh, I must have a mouse in my house. Uh, I don't know what you do when you find out you have a mouse. This is what I did. First, I screamed like a girl. Then I took a shower for nine hours. 
and I went to go sleep in the living room. The next day, I went to go buy a mouse trap. I went to the store, I found a mouse trap, I thought it was perfect for my situation. It's a triangular box with glue on it that smells like peanut butter, and on the side of the box it says, no poison, safe for children. I was like, great, I don't want poison in my home. I don't have any kids, I never know bring a girl over. She's, got, she's like, I can't hang out, I can't hang out, I got my kid with me. I'm like, don't worry, it's in the closet by the mouse trap. it's totally safe, you know? <laughs> um, so I bought it. <laughs> You're horrible people for laughing at this stuff. I re you really, you should all be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> So I bought the trap, put it in the closet, and I went to sleep. And then I was awoken by a mouse screaming for its life, which is so soothing. <laughs> it's kind of like those ocean wave CDs with the ocean wave noises, except there's a mouse screaming for its life, and there's no ocean wave noises. And I felt horrible. I'm like, I can't sleep while this mouse is dying slowly in pain and agony while I'm sleeping. Uh, so I went to sleep in the living room again. And the next day, I went to check on the trap and the mouse, and it was still alive. I was like, how is this thing still alive? It's been the trap for like eight hours, and I remember the box said, no poison. This is the worst mouse trap of all time. <laughs> then I went online, and I'm like, what do I do? Mouse and trap, glue trap, still alive. And what the people for the ethical treatment of animals wanted me to do, they wanted me to take the mouse and the trap, take it miles away from my home, pour vinegar on the glue so the glue would melt and the mouse could get away safely without coming back to my home. So what I did was I put the mouse in a trash bag and threw it in the dumpster. <laughs> and uh, it works great. It worked fantastic. It worked really well. That's great. <laughs> but it felt horrible. I really am a good person, you guys. I don't want animals dying in pain and agony. It's horrible. So I found a humane mouse trap. What PETA wants me to do, a humane mouse trap. $40, that's how much I care. $41, I don't care. $40, I care. <laughs> it's a plastic box. And uh, you put real peanut butter in it. They're not messing around with this fake peanut butter. So I put, put in real peanut butter. And then uh, you put in AA batteries. That's the best part. And what happens, the mouse goes inside, the lid shuts, and it gets electrocuted. <laughs> I know, it's awesome. <laughs> so I was so excited about this. I put the mouse trap in my closet and went to sleep. I was just being, I was ready to be woken up by zzzz or zap or whatever noise it makes. You know, I don't do sound effects, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I waited every night for a week. No mouses, no mouses in my traps. <laughs> and now I'm angry. I spent $40 on this mouse trap. I'm gonna have a dead electrocuted mouse in my house. So I'm trying to attract mice into my home. I put Cheez-Its all over my floor, put up some Minnie Mouse posters, put up some Mickey Mouse posters. I live in West Hollywood, I don't care, whatever, you know? But none of that worked, uh, so I figured out a good solution. I just went to the pet store and I bought a mouse. And I electrocuted it. Yay, the end. That's the end of that one. It's a sad ending, it just has a sad... Horrible, sad ending, but thank you for clapping at that. <laughs> I went out with a girl. Um, that's... That's not the laughy part. Um, why, did you guys, why did you guys laugh at that part? I don't understand. I went out with a girl, true story. Um, I took her to a nice, fancy restaurant. In the middle of the meal, she said to me the worst thing a guy could ever want to hear. She said, you know, Taylor, I really enjoy spending time with you. You remind me of my younger brother. I said, well, I really hope after expensive meals with the little brother you put out. <laughs> Tried online dating. Uh, I signed up for J-Date. I don't know if you've heard about this, J-Date, it's Jewish online dating. Um, so Jews can meet Jews, so you don't have to date them. Um, I don't want to brag, you guys, my J-Date account is blowing up right now. It was bombed by Palestinians. Um, I don't know why you're clapping at that, I don't know which way you're going with that, but, uh, but I'll take it. <laughs> I found this website, you guys, it's amazing. It sends you pictures of girls' faces, right? When the face comes up, you go, I don't like your face. And their face goes away, you never see your face ever again. <laughs> then it sends you another girl's face, you go, I don't like your face, then her face goes away. I spend hours going, I don't like your face, 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 I don't like your face. I had so much fun. <laughs> that I wanted to try this in real life with a real life lady. So I went to the beach, I found a woman very unattractive. So I did what I trained myself to do, I said, excuse me, I don't like your face. And she was still there. I was like, that's weird. 
maybe I should be louder and more specific about what I don't, I don't enjoy about her face. I say, excuse me, your eyes go too far from your nose. I don't like your face. Your gums go too low. I don't like your face. 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 And finally, it works. She did go away. She jumped off a cliff. Aww. But don't worry, she jumped into water. Yay! But there were piranhas in the water. Aww. But they were full. They weren't hungry anymore. Yay! That's because they just ate her newborn child. Aww. But she didn't love her child. Yay! That's because her parents never taught her what love was. Aww. They took her to Disney World every day, yay! But they never let her go on the rides, aww. That's because she didn't want to go on the rides, yay! That's because the first time she went on a ride, she got her arm ripped off, aww. But she was glad it happened, because her parents said, you were so brave when you got your arm ripped off. When you turn 16, we're gonna buy you a brand new Mercedes, yay! But they bought her a stick shift. And if you didn't laugh at that joke, uh, it's probably because you don't know what a duvet is. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out to the show, you guys. Thank you very much. I love you guys. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mom, it doesn't work, it's broken. The duvet's broken. 